Tip number zero. Always know if your function is supporting async loop down to the deepest function or if it runs in the thread pool. The first function runs in the thread pool because there is no async keyword in front of it. Use it in case when whatever code you are using does not support async await. FastAPI will run this function in thread pool. The second function runs asynchronously with async keyword. You must take special care to make sure that all the function that this function calls are asynchronous and are awaited. Otherwise, they will block the whole app. Tip number one. There are actually only 40 threads available in the thread pool. If you use all of them, the app will be blocking until more are available. To change this limit, you can use the following code. This is useful, especially if you're not able to use async await with your functions and endpoints. Tip number two. If you are using dependencies, ensure that if possible, it is marked as async so that everything runs inside of the main loop. If you don't do this, the dependency function will run in a new thread which will slow down the performance of your app. Tip number three. Take advantage of the routing system in FastAPI and neatly organize your endpoints. You can add tags, specify group-wide prefix or dependencies, which is useful in many cases, such as protecting certain endpoints with authentication. You can also mark certain routes as deprecated, which will make them look distinct in the API documentation overview. Tip number four. When deploying a fast API app, you can choose to run the app with multiple worker processes by specifying the workers option in fast API run command. This will spawn multiple worker processes, each running in parallel and able to take advantage of multiple CPU cores on your server, potentially vastly improving the performance of your application. All right, hope you learned something useful. Talk later.